Hello beautiful souls, welcome to my channel, Miss Reamy Healings. My name is Reem. Welcome into the mandala reading. This is going to be uh, the energy reading for the week. Um, we're going to use the mandala source book. I know it's been a minute <laughs> since we did one of these. Um, I just got out of my shadow work as most of you guys know. So just getting back into the swing of things, feeling really refreshed, feeling really renewed. Um, so we're going to pick a page from the mandala source book and channel the energies. We're going to look at some oracle cards um, and do a tarot reading. Just go where we're guided. As you guys know, we just go with the flow here. So, um, all right, <laughs> let's get into it. I'm going to just invoke some protective energy here from Archangel Michael, ancestors, spirit, angels of the most high. And everyone just take a deep breath in and out. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So let's go ahead and pick a page from the Mandala Source Book. Thank you, Angels of the Most High. Thank you, Ancestors. Thank you, Guardian Angels. What message do you have for us? What mandala? What guidance? What do we need to know? What are we supposed to know? What can we know? All right, this one here. So it's on page 318. I know you guys can't see that. <laughs> 318. Okay, 318. I believe these are in the, the fertile earth, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, out of the acorn. Wow, that's beautiful. All right. This is the mandala. I'm sorry, I can't get any closer. Out of the acorn, this is in the category of the fertile earth. This is really interesting because I believe it was Scorpio's reading that I did where they channeled to me one seed. It only takes one seed, one intention, one acorn to birth a tree. So here we go, out of the acorn, the acorn is a proverbial symbol of possibility, a capsule of a future life as a mighty oak small enough to be held in the palm of the hand. And I think I channeled oak tree in Libra's reading, if I'm not mistaken. Our own potential as creative nurturing souls may similarly outstrip all expectations. Look at the acorn in the center of the mandala, a mysterious rounded egg-like form that contains all developments to come encoded within it. That's interesting. Rather like the future that is encoded in all the innumerable events of past and present. Now turn your eyes to the fully grown tree, a parent of many acorns, the triumph of potential made actual. Look next at the leaves surrounding the central square. So amazingly condensed is the acorn that every vein of every leaf of the adult tree is contained within the acorn's set of miniature biological instructions. Finally, look at the circle within the square. Spiritual perfection incarnated within the cosmos. Like the mature oak, tree incarnated without within the acorn i totally butchered that that was so beautiful let me read that again <laughs> finally look at the circle within the square spiritual perfection incarnated within the cosmos 
like the mature oak tree incarnated within the acorn. And then there's a quote here that says, start with what you know, mature according to nature, let destiny do the rest. I'm going to read a little bit further. The Dark Wood. The medieval Italian poet Dante began his inferno with himself walking alone, lost in a dark wood. Selva Oscura, symbolizing the confusions we can experience in our middle years. After wrong turns and encounters with wild beasts, he comes across the ghost of the poet Virgil, who has come to guide him back to his path, to the nearby mountaintop. Uh, and in Virgo's reading, we had the mountain. Virgil says the root will take him will take them, excuse me, through hell, but that eventually they will reach heaven, where Dante's beloved Beatrice awaits. It was Beatrice who, seeing Dante lost, sent Virgil to guide him. I just got chills. <laughs> Apply this tale to your own life. Just how dense is the wood? And how lost are you? What are the wild beasts? Who is your Beatrice? Who is your Virgil? Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And then there's a couple more quotes here I'm going to read for you. The path of love. Pursue some path, however narrow and crooked, in which you walk with love and reverence. Another quote that says, the self as tree. Like a tree I stand, reaching for the light, gaining strength from the darkness at my roots. My body is twisted by the storms of life, yet in my uniqueness, I am beautiful. I'm going to try not to cry. I'm going to try not to cry today. <laughs> um, that is really absolutely beautiful. You know, when I was going through, oh, dang it, I may actually cry. When I was, when I was going through my shadow work, I didn't feel like myself. Oh, dang it, I don't want to cry. Um, and I just did my makeup and I don't want to cry. Um, I didn't feel like myself when I was doing my shadow work. And sometimes healing, you don't feel like yourself. And my, my spirit team was like telling me, it's okay to not feel like yourself when you're healing. You're not supposed to feel like yourself when you're healing. Things just feel chaotic, they feel destructive, they feel you can't control it, that's chaos, that's darkness. Um, darkness is this beautiful creative energy, but it's this destructive energy and it's chaotic and you can't control it. And I'm the type of person that I do like to control things and I want things a certain way. And I've learned that through this particular shadow work, I can't. I just need to go with the flow. I need to go with things. I need to trust spirit. I need to trust destiny. And here um, is this, this quote that said, start with what you know, mature according to nature and let destiny do the rest. I believe a lot of us are being redirected back to our path or we're being redirected um, to ourselves, to what we know. Um, even in the Taurus reading, a lot of it was about receding back to self. So a lot of us are being redirected to the self if we feel like we've been lost or if we feel like we've, you know, um, went away from our path or went away from our journey or however you define loss for yourself in your current experiences and your current journeys who is your beatrice and who is your virgil 
those are really important things to assess or reflect on okay there's a spiritual paradigm that's changing and there's a earth paradigm that's changing as well there are so many things that are being rewritten and recalibrated at this time cosmically within the natural world as well and within ourselves so a lot of us are feeling even bodily changes molecular and anatomical changes um even here it said so amazingly so amazingly condensed is the acorn that every vein of every leaf of the adult tree is contained within the acorn set of miniature biological instructions it's encoded to it's it's almost like these biological instructions that are within us it's been encoded for this change for this shift okay get into the oracles um this is the enchanted maps tarot or enchanted maps oracle excuse me What do we what do we need to know? The guidance. <laughs> Sacred pool. Number 47. This is also um, number eleven. This is master number master number eleven. Sacred pool. And look at this, at the bottom of the deck you have Magical Map Shifter number 52. I'm going to take that as well. And at the bottom of that you have Coming to Life and then Bone Collector. Alright, we got a lot to talk about here. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to enjoy this energy with you guys. And we're going to talk through this because there's a lot going on. Um, so with the sacred pool energy first of all it's this beautiful green energy so heart chakra lots of heart chakra opening heart chakra healing taking place at this time i believe sagittarius also received this during um during a planetary reading but i don't remember which one um but anyways, the message is coming through again here where um, I saw the Blue Lagoon in Iceland specifically and the Blue Lagoon in Iceland um, has these properties, like healing prop properties where it heals the skin, like heals eczema, heals dermatitis, heals um, skin ailments and the sacred pool is doing that okay the the sacred pool is cleansing the sacred pool is healing the sacred pool is releasing and removing anything that is no longer needed this is a purification and i love that the bone collector is here as well because the bone collector is also purification i feel like all of the readings that i did over the past couple of days all of the things that are channeled they're in this collective consciousness that are coming together here in this mandala specifically because again for the virgo reading there was a medicine wheel that got channeled to me and it was um and it was called angel's gate but it was specifically a medicine wheel of healing and here you have the bone collector and the magical map shifter and look at the energies in a shape of a wheel here in both of these oracle cards and this medicine wheel had a specific purpose of providing healing and enhanced communication between um, enhanced communication to the spiritual world the veil is extremely thin um, 
extremely thin for those of you that are in tune okay and on this path the bone collector here purifies the bones of the deceased so that they can move through seamlessly and effortlessly and from the earthly world to the spiritual world so this is symbolic to me of ourselves being purified at this time ourselves being cleansed and healed and i feel like we don't need to do anything i feel like these energies are just descending and they are being washed over us and we just need to be open to this change because within us are biological instructions and then, and again i said these changes are encoded in these biological instructions within us so it's inevitable when you reach a particular frequency and vibration it's inevitable that this shift that these healing properties of the sacred pool and of the bone collector these energies are going to heal and purify you for the next and what is the next a rebirth a new paradigm okay i feel like that's something that we're going to witness in the world um it's bigger than just you and i it's 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 collective it's it's going it's it's big and we're part of that and that's what this magical map shifter is doing there's so many different elements that are blending and coming together this is magician energy but this is not manifestation this is a shift okay this is a magical map shifter this is not manifestation yes this is magician energy but this magician like energy this map shifter is shifting and blending energies for creation for production to produce and create out of this active energy that is within us that's what this map shifter is doing and again we're talking about shifts and change changes that are already encoded with us in our biological instructions and then we re-emerge we have a rebirth and here you have number 29 coming to life this is 29 9 10 11 so again 9 plus 2 is 11 you have 47 which is number 11 you also have here bone collector which is one <laughs> so you have lots of you have 11 11 i'm seeing one 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 <laughs> and 52 which is seven about cre this divine creation and this coming to life this person is in a stone was stone so to speak right look at them they're coming out of the stone and they're coming to life this is you re-emerging rebirthing and coming to life and there's a beautiful butterfly here very significant of metamorphosis and transformation so i believe a lot of you are going through this surrender some of you might even be going through shadow work. I am going to be making a video on that um, real soon. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how <laughs> to talk through that. Um, and then we're going, you guys will be experiencing healing, which most of you are, if that's your timeline right now. I know a lot of you are from the energies that I've been channeling over the past couple of days this purification process and then you're going to be feeling this shift here of change and then coming to life okay so um my stomach is growling i literally just woke up and i had to do these readings so if you hear my stomach it's all good i'm gonna eat in just a little <laughs> um I want to I don't want to use any more oracle cards I feel like that's I 
I think I want to use the Light Sears Tarot for this one. Yeah, 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 okay. So let's get into a short tarot spread and see what other messages and guidance. Even with, um, you know, I channeled for Virgo, but I feel like it could apply for anyone. Um, there was a beautiful message about leave a light on. Leave a light on for others. Doesn't even have to apply romantically. Just leave a light on for others. And this goes back to who is your Beatrice, because Beatrice sent Virgil for Dante to redirect him on the path. Let's go. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. Pisces energy. This high priestess, a lot of you, this is you, this is us. We are, like I said, this energy is descending. Look at all of this beautiful energy descending onto us and working through us, healing us, removing things that are no longer needed. And we are embracing this new spiritual and earth paradigm and these shifts and we're re-emerging here. The communication to spirit is heightened because now you are surrendering to this flow, surrendering to this energy, surrendering to these shifts, and you're in this new vibration and frequency. So the flow with spirit, the communication with spirit is going to be heightened. Your gifts, your talents are going to be heightened. The Empress. I'm just going to get a couple cards out and then we'll talk through the energy. That's divine feminine healing. Just like the acorn, just like the acorn giving birth to a tree, the empress, womb, energy, mother healing. This is this coming to life energy. This is this coming to life energy. This is this rebirth. We're in the womb. We're in healing right now. And there is this new energy from the moon that is descending and healing us. I believe we have a full moon. I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. I believe it's in Gemini. To give birth to new life. You have the Knight of Swords. I just heard Hunter with the Knight of Swords because this person has a crossbow and there's um, a crow with this person. And then you have here the Seven of Swords. It's the same person. This person is hunting under the moonlight. I don't know what they're hunting. I don't know what that means. Hold on. You have the Ace of Wands underneath that. Beautiful. It's almost like as if this person is hunting. It's hunter energy. But it's not. It's not dark. It's just to restore balance. 
I don't feel like it's an actual person. I'm just saying it's a person because I'm looking at the depiction of the cards. But I do feel like this is spirit hunting here to restore balance. It's almost like they're hunting energy, like unwanted energy, energy that's just no longer needed. for transmutation for purification ace of wands this ace of wands is a, is this coming to life energy because this fire here is a life force energy and again for libra we talked about the balance of the forces and here's the two of pentacles restoring balance of the changes and the shifts that are happening in the spiritual paradigms, the, the spiritual paradigms that are shifting and the earth paradigms that are shifting. And I feel like spirit here is hunting energy, getting rid of like unwanted energy, an energy that's just no longer needed to transmute it, to restore that balance. For new beginnings, for the shifts to take place. That's what spirit is doing here. I feel like for us, we just need to surrender. We just need to be open channels, open vessels. We need to be, um, we're part of the restoration of this, okay? And we're, it's, it's almost like we're just watching it unfold, but we are open and, and we, we are surrendering to it instead of trying to control it and restrict. Because this is flowing through us so that we can be transformed, so that we can be shifted and changed for the new paradigms. The Page of Pentacles, the Four of Wands. There's a new energy here being weaved. This is the energy that we are going to be feeling, okay, as we come to life, when we feel reemerged, when we come out, okay, out of the womb, when we come out of it. We're going to be weaving this new energy here is what I'm seeing here with the with the page of pentacles. And weaving, I mean, we're going to be harnessing and using this new energy to cultivate new realities in our life. There's going to be a restoration of balance. Again, we're part of the restoration of this balance. And there's going to be um, here with the four of wands, more balanced energy. This is almost like we were like we made it. <laughs> and this it's almost like an invitation for others to come into this energy, to shift into this energy, to flow with this with this energy. Look at the fluidity of this energy here. You're going to find a lot of things are going to feel crazy. You may feel like you're not yourself um, during this healing process, but again, just allow it. This is this is inevitable. This these shifts are encoded in our biological instructions, and I love that the Empress is here because that's exactly that <laughs> in our biology, in the womb, in the creation. It's encoded. This is inevitable for those that are going to be surrendering to this frequency, surrendering to these vibrations. I said before many times that your tears are not for nothing. Your tears are fuel to the flame and uh, to your tears are fuel to the fire within you. And um, here with the Ace of Wands, there's a tear here that is dissipating. And look at the fire and the flame that is emerging from this person. So 
you know, I've been reading a lot of comments lately and a lot of people have been feeling, you know, um, hysterical crying. They've been down, they've been depressed, they've been sad, especially what's going on with the world. Our tears are never for nothing. Our tears are fuel. Okay, and that's what this Ace of Wands is also talking about. Oh, I'm also being guided to tell you that there is a rabbit in the Bone Collector card, okay? And rabbits also represent fertility, okay? And we do have here the Empress, all about fertility and giving birth to new, okay? Coming to life. This energy is really big, and I feel like this energy is going to be... This energy is going to be shaped and shifted all throughout the end of the year. And I feel like the solar eclipse on the 14th and um, on December 21st. So we have the solar eclipse on the 14th and then we have the solstice on the 21st. Those are as mentioned by Russell, rustling around, those are really big dates. So I feel like this energy is going to continue to um, just get bigger and bigger as we get closer to those dates, as we get closer to the end of the year as well. Okay guys, this is what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what's going on for you guys in your journeys. Um, how do you interpret this for yourself as well? I hope um, I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.